Hey guys and welcome to the next video uh, from the Random Watch Dude, uh, video number 61 this is actually at this stage. Uh, just just briefly actually before I go into the subject of the day I just wanted again to say thank you to everybody that's uh, liked and subscribed and watched, watched the videos that I've been putting up. I started making uh, videos in about the middle of November and uh, and here we are uh, going into January and uh, you know we're, we're just getting towards 700 subscribers now so yeah over the moon with that guys thank you very much it's a it's a show of support it's a hard slog uh, on YouTube I gather I've been doing a bit of uh, reading about it it's a hard slog you know to get to that magic number of a thousand subscribers once you get to a thousand subscribers all of a sudden YouTube start to promote your channel a bit more uh, which obviously gives you more exposure. Uh, for now, I'm relying on uh, searches, you know, people searching and keyword searches, uh, which is why you'll find in some of the video titles that I kind of, I'm, I'm very careful with some of the keywords that I put in, uh, because that's, at the moment, that's the only way, essentially, that, that new people are getting exposure to the channel is through keyword searches. So thank you to, to those of you that have subscribed. It's, it's, I can't tell you how important it is to me uh, that you are. Thank you very much. And uh, I will keep making videos, guys. So, so what I'm going to do now, from now on, as we go into this year, is I'm going to start uh, releasing like a series of videos. Uh, so I'll, I'll be working on maybe two to three videos uh, every week to be released, uh, mainly on a Friday and Saturday. But what I also want to do is, is start working on some serials. And uh, one of the serials, and getting get to the point of this video, one of the serials that I'm, I want to uh, really sort of delve into and release a video on once a week is, uh, is the watch collecting madness. Now this is a subject which uh, does get tackled by, by a lot of the big YouTube channels, I know. And uh, we, all, we all know what I mean by the watch collecting madness. Uh, it is a madness really, isn't it? It drives you potty uh, sometimes, this, this watch collecting uh, hobby. As much as you enjoy it, it does drive you mad at times. And I know a lot of you out there uh, who have messaged me as well. Uh, privately, you know, just to ask questions, you know, about uh, different psychological aspects of the hobby. And uh, I thought it would be fun to just sort of every every now and then release a video where we talk about a specific subject. So today, uh, first episode uh, of the Watch Collecting Madness uh, series is the rebuy. So part one today is the rebuy. Now, I think I think most of you will know what I mean by a rebuy, uh, but just in case, I'll, I'll just I'll just go over this. I've come up with a, a very very uh, short, succinct phrase. I've written it down. Uh, a rebuy is a model of watch that you once owned, sold, and later bought an identical version of that model and put it back in your collection. So you rebought it. You owned it. You sold it for whatever reason. And then you changed your mind and decided that you wanted that watch back again. So, and I'm not talking about the identical watch, I'm talking about that model. Very, very rarely do we get an opportunity to, to buy back, obviously, the identical watch uh, that we sold and then had regrets about. So, uh, now rebuys don't just happen once. Now, here's, here's one of the things that I've experienced. And I, I'm, guys, hands up, I'm very, very guilty of the rebuy. I'm, I'm very good at the rebuy. I might, uh, I'm, I think it's probably better to put it like that. I'm very good at rebuying watches. They happen repeatedly as well. You don't just, this a rebuy is not necessarily just a once off occasion. Uh, there are models of watches, and I'll give you the worst case scenario for me. The worst case scenario for me is that I have bought and sold a particular model of watch four times. I'm currently owning the fourth iteration or the fourth exact model of a watch uh, that I've bought and sold three times previously. And I'm, I'm, off, I'm on my fourth purchase of that watch. Now, if you're interested to know what that watch is, it's the Amiga Planet Ocean 45.5 mil, the big boy, the big chunky boy uh, Planet Ocean. Haven't got it on today, actually. Today I'm wearing my 225 225.5. Uh, and this is the first time I've owned this watch, by the way. Having, having had this as a grail watch almost for several years, and not having owned uh, this watch in the past, I finally acquired this watch after several years of ogling over it uh, a couple of months ago. And so this is my first version of this, but the Planet Ocean 45.5, big size, as it's quite often referred to, uh, is a watch that I've owned four times. Uh, I've had it th three times. I've had the 2200.50, which is the one with the black bezel. And, uh, and uh, my fourth iteration is the only difference with my fourth uh, version of that model is that, uh, that I've currently got the one with the orange bezel and the orange uh, numerals, the orange 
6912. That's the only difference, but it is essentially the same watch. Uh, I've, I've also, I'm ashamed to say, owned the uh, Seiko Marine Master 300, the MM300. I'll put pictures up of these watches as we go, just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about. Uh, I've bought and sold that watch three times. I've bought and sold uh, the Seiko SKX009, and I've actually lost count of how many times I've bought a version of that watch over the years and then sold it again. I, I'm Honestly, guys, I think up five, six, seven times maybe own that watch over the years. Uh, another one uh, is, uh, and I've just given you some examples of rebuys, uh, personal rebuys, uh, and this is the last example I give you. Another one is the Amiga Seamaster Professional, and this is uh, the version with the lacquer dial. I've owned that watch twice. I don't have it in my collection now. I've bought and sold that watch twice. So, so these are the rebuys that I'm talking about, guys, and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. It's, I think it's part of the watch collecting hobby. Uh, I've got, um, I've come up with three key reasons, uh, and this is the point of this video, I've come up with three key reasons why I think that happens in the watch hobby. Reason number one are that it's, it's quite hard for me to explain this in, in, uh, in, a, in a few words, but the pros and the cons of that particular watch are evenly balanced. That quite often leads to a sale followed by regret, followed by a rebuy. So the pros and the cons are evenly balanced. And what I mean by that is, and I'll take the, I'll take the, uh, the Planet Ocean that I've got right now as an example. What I love about that watch is evenly balanced about the problems I have with that watch. So when my glass is half full, the watch is absolutely fantastic. I love every second of having it on my wrist. When my glass is half empty, I hate everything about it that annoys me, you know? The fact that, you know, to a degree, it's just a couple of millimeters too big. That annoys me some days, whereas on other days, the fact that it's a massive dinner plate on your watch, I really like. So explain that to me. Um, as is usually the case, the helicopter's decided to fly over when I'm making a video, so please forgive me. Uh, but there is an airfield not far from here, and which is why we quite often have small light aircraft and, uh, and helicopters flying over. So it's, it's the pros and the cons are evenly balanced. What I love about a watch, if it's evenly balanced by what I dislike about the watch, that will quite often lead to me getting into a cycle with that particular model, uh, where I, I buy it because of what I like, I wear it for a bit, I enjoy it, but then I start to get, I start to see the niggly, annoying things about it. And depending on what day of the week it is, I might just decide to sell it one day. Uh, and then a few weeks later, once it's gone out of my collection, I miss it because I miss the really things, the really good things that I liked about it. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that you can't decide, you can't pinpoint exactly where and when you're able to wear that watch. And I'll go back to the Planet Ocean uh, as well, the 45.5. And I think the Marine Master MM300 fit into this category for me as well, which is why I bought and sold the Marine Master three times. They're watches which are, they're far too nice to be beta watches. They're far too nice to just wear down the beach and smash them around uh, in the sand and get ugh, sand in the bracelet and sand all over the glass and what have you. That's, so they're not beta watches by any stretch of the imagination and you wouldn't go smashing, a, smashing nails into a, into a piece of wood with a hammer with it just in case you, you, know, you shock it and you, know, you do horrible things to the movement. I mean, that's, that's what beta watches are for, right? So these watches are far too nice to be beaters, but they're also very informal, sporty watches. Unlike, for example, let's say a Seamaster or a, uh, or a Submariner uh, where they're sporty, but they're also quite formal. Uh, these t these watches that I rebuy tend to be watches that I can't I can't decide if they're they're too sporty. Let's say to to wear with a shirt and wear to work. The Marine Master 300 was a classic for that. I really couldn't decide when was the best time to to wear that MM 300. It was a very sporty looking watch, but uh, because it was also quite thick. Um, it, didn't, it didn't sit nicely under the cuff, so I thought, okay, well, I can't really wear this to work easily because it stands out a bit too much. Um, but then it also it wasn't, it was far too nice to be a beta watch, so I ended up wearing it less and less. And that's where you get to with these watches that don't fit into a specific category, I find, is that you actually just wear them less. And that's when you start to get annoyed with them and see the, see the negatives, you know, you, you stop seeing the things that you really like about them. 
Uh, and just finally, guys, uh, number three is uh, it becomes a collection watch because because it doesn't fit into a specific category of uh, category of either being a beater uh, or being a formal or a sports. Um, and so you end up turning it into a collection watch and what I found is that when I buy a watch that uh, has a very very kind of limited range uh, of times when I can actually wear it in other words you know I end up having to when I decide I've got a good opportunity to wear it it means I've got to pull it out of the watch box and set the time set the date give it a wind uh, you know and, and I'm one of those people guys I'm, I'm a little bit fussy I, I like my I like my minute hand uh, to strike the minute indicator you know when the you know when the seconds hand is at the top at zero I, and so I do take sometimes two or three minutes to make sure that my minute hand is exactly uh, in the right place so uh, yeah look that adds to the time it takes me to set my watches um, because I know once it's there you know I'm I'm good I'm, I'm okay my OCD suddenly goes away because I know that my minute hand is, is hitting the uh, hitting the minute markers you know when the seconds hands at zero so it's it's uh, it becomes a watch that just becomes a bit of a pain in the collection knowing when to wear it and that's reason number three guys is that these these rebuy watches end up becoming collection watches they end up becoming trophy watches uh, and and depending on whether your gla glass is half full or half empty and we know that that changes depending on the day of the week or the week in the month. Um, you know, you will sometimes weaken, and I do when I when I'm talking about rebuy watches. I, you'll sometimes just weaken and say, right, okay, this watch isn't quite working for me. I'm going to put it up for sale. And then, of course, you, so you sell the watch in no time at all because typically these watches are lovely, lovely watches. They're very popular. You sell the watch in no time at all. Uh, you sit there and you think, oh, yeah, okay, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad that's gone now because that watch was really irritating me. Uh, and then after maybe a, a month, something like that, usually about a month, six weeks, you start to think, oh yeah, do you know what? Today's today's one of those days where I could really I, I could really be happy wearing my Planet Ocean 45.5, or you know, oh yeah, just a perfect day for an MM300, isn't it? Uh, and of course, then you realise you haven't got that watch in your collection anymore. So you start looking on the auction websites and you start looking on Chrono 24 and uh, and lo and behold, you know, within uh, within a couple or three weeks, you know, you obsess over it for a little while. You buy a really nice one. It's back in your collection. Cycle repeat. So it's rinse, wash, complete. Is that right? Yeah, rinse, wash, complete, something like that. So you just keep going around in circles and circles. And that's what a rebuy watch is, guys. Um, now. I guess uh, at the end of a video like this, you know, we're all looking for some pearl of wisdom about how to break the cycle. Um, and I've come to the conclusion, guys, that, um, that that's that's not a cycle that can be broken uh, unless you uh, exercise an incredible amount of self-control and tell yourself that there is just a watch out there that you absolutely love, you can afford, there's a space in your watch box for it, but you can't buy it. And um, and that will lead me to the next uh, episode in this series of the watch collecting madness, uh, guys. But that's uh, that's a conversation for another day. So that's that's the end of this video, guys. Tell me tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if I'm kind of on the mark there with with rebuys and what what makes a rebuy. Why do we rebuy watches uh, that at one point we've decided we don't like anymore? And then all of a sudden we fall back in love with and buy another one. And why do we do it three or four times? Because I know we, I know I'm not the only one. I know you guys are doing it as well. You're buying the same watch three or four times, like I have. So, guys, tell me in the comments what those watches are. I'd love to know if the the kind of watch that I've just described to you about, you know, what is a rebuy watch. I, I'm, I'd love to know whether I'm kind of. Uh, you know, f found a little uh, a little trend there. Whether you guys are experiencing the same thing with the same type of watch, let me know in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Cheers.